for a couple of days and um, I'm staying in a hotel. My wife's uh, got a work conference, that's why I'm a little bit uh, dappered up. Um, uh, it's quite late, um, but I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about how to maintain your drawing, because even when you go away, um, you have to think about things like sketchbooks and how to make them work and how to keep things going. I really absolutely love sketchbooks. People say, um, how do you improve your drawing? How do you make it? How do you be sharp? How can you like be, make more definite strokes? Well, I fill up my sketchbooks and I've got three on the go at the moment. And I thought I'll show you a little bit of what I'm doing with them. And then, um, hey, Gomachart, how are you doing? And then I can talk to you about how I have different sketchbooks for different things and we can keep keep them going on hey eric how are you doing he's in europe so uh, he's going to be on time for this one so let me talk about this sketchbook first obviously i'm in a hotel um it's a nice view out there but the light's really poor this is the only you know you're probably getting a, a beam of light coming here getting in the way but you know you'll be able to see what i've got um so some of you know i'm planning a, a new anatomy archive for real animator training um, and we're going to do a muscle archive. I'm going to give you an insight as to just how detailed um, the lectures are and just how, how I plan them. Now when I planned the bone archives I didn't do it in a sketchbook because I was kind of doing it on you know on my Cintiq and just working stuff out for you but I thought this time it might be nice to document it all in a sketchbook and um, so I have started even though I know the muscles of the neck I've started kind of going and working on this uh, section by section to plan how to teach you people how to build the neck muscles, you know, as a beginner. So I've started working on really understanding the shapes of those separate muscles and we're going to work on uh, turnarounds and things like that. So I'm going to build these muscles as like animation construction for you. So. Uh, I'm re-educating myself a little bit, so I've started this, and I'm, you know, I've got all the way to go, but it's going to be done, you know, because we've got to learn about the triangles of the neck. So what I'm doing at the moment, like, for example, um, this is an overview, uh, so I'm just familiarizing myself with the stuff that I already know, all the different muscles, but I like to go to science, you know, rather than art, because when I want to teach it, I need to know different things that perhaps I never learned myself as an artist when I learned the anatomy many years ago. So obviously we're going to learn about the hyoid bone and stuff like that. So I kind of knew that anyway, but I'm just familiaring my, familiarizing myself with that anyway. Then we're going to learn about, you know, um, the placement of the hyoid bone in relation to the skull and the neck and all that. Because it's very important to understand that to draw the neck properly you've got to know about the hyoid bone and there are loads of different triangles of the neck the posterior triangle and the anterior triangle which is divided so i'm at the moment i'm learning about well not learning i'm learning about how to teach you about the submental and submandibular triangles you know and then the muscular triangle the subclavian triangle uh, the occipital triangle all that kind of stuff that you're going to learn about so i've got to I'm, I'm building this sketchbook as a way of planning. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm going to a, a dinner with my wife at her work convention. So I'm away in a hotel, thought I'll do some sketchbook while I'm waiting for her convention to finish. And I thought, why not share what I'm doing with you? So I'm planning Real Animator Training Muscle Archive at the moment. So you can see just uh, how good this, this is going to be. So I'm planning how I'm going to teach it macro and then you're going to go micro as well. So that's one sketchbook that we got doing. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. Now we've got uh, this sketchbook, which I obviously, so that's one sketch. I've got three of, on the go simultaneously. Now this sketchbook is going to be something rather special because some of you know about my rabbit project or my hair project. Thank you, Khalil. And um, he's getting a redesign. So even though we've done a whole load of animation with him, um, 
you know, that was just pre-production testing. As I'm going to get closer and closer to perhaps launching a Kickstarter of him, I'm going to produce a development of his design and a development of the progress. So I've started researching real hares because rabbits are just too cute. So he's going to be a hare. And I've started researching real hares and like making making this sketchbook um, to make... Uh, show the design progress of the character as we go. I've only just started this one. As you can see, the real animator training ones are more important. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of hair anatomy and obviously the hair can't really be true to hair anatomy, but we're gonna try and personify his... Uh, thank you, Khalil. I like to work purely in pen, so no pencil. So all of these, this is, again, I'm going to talk to you. This is what I would call a presentation sketchbook. So you can see I've really thought about the compositions on the page as I've, I've gone and done image searches and sketched these images of hairs. So I've really thought about how they sit well on the page. I've also kind of done it with the Real Animator Training Muscle sketch pad. That, I, that I've started on the on the next. So I've kind of thought you should really always think about the presentation of your sketchbook, how how it looks nice. It just helps train your eye. It helps your eye kind of understand uh, composition. And I tend to, I've been teaching traditional animation for a couple of years now. Um, with uh, my Real Animator Training Archive. I don't just make the lectures up on the spot. I did when it was live stream library, but now with, when it became Real Animator Training, I plan those lectures. I work hard on those lectures to get them as good as I do. And, you know, I just thought I'd give you a sneak preview. It's, even though I know the muscles, I can tell you all the muscles, you know, all the, you know, uh, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, you know, uh, bicep, tricep, um, palmaris longus, um, palmaris ulnaris, flexor ulnaris, you know, uh, deltoid, uh, pectoralis major minor, serratus anterior, latissimus dorsi, sartoris, you know, uh, you know, um, what is it, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, uh, tibialis anterior, gastric nemius, soleus, you know, I can tell you it all, orbicularis, oris, frontalis, zygomatic major minor, but it doesn't matter if I know all that. If I'm going to teach it to you, then, you know, um, I've got to rework it so that I know how to explain it to a complete beginner. Because that's the intention of real animated training. So we've got that to get sport, And we've got this one where you're going to see the evolution of the hair, how his design goes. Then I've got another sketchbook hair, um, which is the scrap. I've been practicing with a brush pen and pen instead of pencil. I feel like it makes more conscious about the lines, care and intent. Andreas, that is absolutely true. As I was saying before, you know, I go off on tangents. As I was saying, what I like to do with these sketchbooks is, is I never use a pencil. I go straight in there and just work with my, with my pen and keep it straight hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination, that kind of fine art drawing is very, very important. For you for you to develop as an artist you know there's different times for doing different working different drawing muscles um sure i always say scribble a lot don't make a lot of mistakes make a lot of errors with your line it's good to do that because you know that's the way you grow that's the way you learn but also there's a time and a place for this kind of hand-eye coordination copying drawing uh making sure that you really hey how are you doing making sure that you really sharpen up your, you know, basically your hand-eye coordination, your ability to see, your ability to draw on the page. Very, very important, uh, very, very um, necessary to your progress as a draftsman. So those kind of things, are, I think, are very important. Now, sketchbook number three is what I call my playbook. It's a scrappy not caring about the compositions as we were in hair, not really, you know, I, I don't care, I'm loose. So on this one, I'm playing with my uh, rabbit design, uh, taking him, uh, uh, changing his proportions as he's going to be getting ready for the, for the final design. So here we see, you know, I'm reworking his head. It's ugly, it's scrappy, 
I'm using my brain work, I'm not caring too much about the presentation, I'm just getting ideas down there and, you know, finding my form with that. So that's my third sketchbook along the go. And then once I'm, I'm, I think drawing with pen is the best way to learn how to draw anything. Yeah, you know, I always used to draw with pencil and, you know, some of my best animation and some of my professional work um, back when I used to be a hand-drawn animator, well, pencil was my comfort zone and I always worked with blue pencil and whatever and I love it. But um, when I started drawing traditionally again, because I switched over completely to digital, and when I started drawing traditionally again, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. And I have to say that going with pen and going and doing gesture with pen and, you know, making myself more definite with pen made me just so much stronger, so much uh, faster, so much better. And when I come back to using a pencil, you know, I can still use a pencil and enjoy a pencil and all that kind of stuff. But I tend not to, I tend to, most of my traditional work I tend to use with these sketchbooks and, and just with a pen, just to force myself to be able to make a decision, make a decision quick and get it down and be definite and confident about that thing that you're making. So once, once I'm kind of, I'm going to fill this with ideas for the project and once I'm kind of happy with that, that the more thought about versions of the rabbit uh, are going to be put into this sketchbook. Um, hello, yeah, 2.45 a.m. It's, uh, what is it in the night here? In, I'm in Auckland, I'm in Auckland Sky City Hotel at the moment, and it is quarter to eight in the evening. So I'm waiting, if you're wondering about this, this uh, attire that I've got, my wife's got a, a work, um, we don't live in Auckland, uh, we live in another city, uh, but she's got a work do in Auckland, so I'm not allowed to go to part of it, but then I'm allowed to go to another part of it because I don't work in that company, so that's uh, that's all private stuff, but uh, so that's why I'm dressed up. Yeah, it will be good if you start classes on traditional animation from basics after. Mirza, I've already done it. But you have to join my Real Animator training library. The basics, we've got a basics archive, we've got an intermediate archive, we've got an advanced archive, we've got a tutorial archive, we've got an anatomy archive. Um, I've got people there who are from CalArts, who have been to CalArts, who've learned from, who've been to Don Bluth's course, who've been to Richard Williams' son course, uh, Alex Williams, he's got a course, postgraduate course in the UK. I've got professionals all coming to learn from my Real Animator training library. So I have, um, it's not that I'm starting to teach, I've been running the Real Animator training library for a while. Okay, so uh, this is just building on, you know, I'm just showing you what I'm building on. Thank you for sharing this on YouTube. I'm very impressed. With, thank you so much, Eric. You're always very generous with your comments. Um, oh, I'm going to join it. Okay, yeah, well, go to my site, ambanimation.com and check it out. Um, it's really, really good. We're, we're growing and we're growing in stature as well. As I said, you know, we've got people who've been cleanup artists for Disney and Canada joining it. We've got people who are, you know, uh, people who are getting hired by Nickelodeon joining it. Do review animations? Um, not really. I can do sometimes when they're in my Facebook group. Same here. Okay. But when, when it comes to me reviewing stuff, I've got a free for all Facebook group. Um, but mostly I focus on my training library members. That's not just because they're training library members. It's because when they post stuff, it's serious. You know, I'm not going to review some somebody's anime fight scene when they don't when they exhibit that they don't know anything about basic animation. That would me, be me like going and watching a bunch of toddlers playing a game of football and, you know, really considering it and taking it seriously. There's an artist named Junkin who draws nothing but Ben. This guy is insane. Yeah, I know him. Absolutely. I don't know him personally, but I know who you're talking about. He's an amazing artist. Absolutely. So it's important, you know, if I'm going to review a work, I, I, I look at the work and I make an immediate judgment. Does Has this person even bothered to learn about animation or are they just playing? You know, I liken it to kids playing cops and robbers in the playground. People trying to animate stuff without taking time to learn this stuff, without taking time to learn the anatomy. I love your development of the rabbit character. I will keep in mind what you're doing. Concept sketches of my characters. 
Thank you. Yeah, you'll see with that rabbit character, that what happened was, is it started off, I wanted AMB Animation to have a mascot like Mickey Mouse, you know? Um, so I wanted him to kind of look like he was from that kind of era, that kind of Mickey Mouse thing, but I wanted him to have a contemporary feel of the stuff that I grew up on. Like, I love Street Fighter, I love a bit of anime, but I love Disney more. I lo I'm a martial arts instructor. So it was everything that I love and everything about me that I put into that rabbit character. And I, I did a little test where, where I was doing some fighting with him. And, you know, I just did it. I didn't think about the quality of the animation. I just wanted to rush it out because I wanted to produce content. It, obviously, it had to be kind of good quality. But, you know, if I really wanted to take my time on it, I would have done it a lot better. But, you know, I, I just tested it out. And I got, it, it, it was a good result. But it showed me that he was a little cartoony for, for certain things that I wanted to do with him. But then I went ahead and started working with the with a project that I wanted to do, you know, it was fine him being cartoony. I mean, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was cartoony, but I started putting him in his own little story. And then the story was getting more and more involved. And as I was writing the story, I was getting deeper because I'm a very... AMB, I have to say, you've changed my perspective on animation completely. Much more patient now. I'm laying a foundation of the stuff. Fantastic. It's my pleasure. It's my absolute pleasure. Um, I'm so glad that I've inspired you to do that. So what it essentially is, is the story, I'm, I'm a very philosophical person and I love the martial arts, what I call the true martial arts, which is not just combative, uh, competitive sports stuff. And um, as I started writing his story, he was getting deeper and deeper. And then I started going and looking at real rabbits and actually physically going and seeing real rabbits. And I couldn't find a single rabbit that wasn't just such a cute little fluff ball that made you want to just, uh, you know, Turn, turn into just just you know, just tremendously cute. You know, one of the cutest things I've ever seen. I said, I got a problem there. Okay, <laughs> like, how am I going to make this guy? Uh, you know, what I want to make him. So then I started researching. I noticed that hares were so much more kind of vile looking than rabbits. Um, uh, they're not vile looking. They're beautiful, but they look like they could it could do some real damage. You know. Uh, and they look like they can take damage. And that's that's it. More about the rabbit being, being able to do damage. He needs to look like he can take damage. You know, the scenes I've got for the Kickstarter uh, that I've got planned where we've got a, a big... I figure people love fight scenes, so I'm going to try and get a five-minute fight scene done with a kind of... Uh, uh, my kind of version of a Ryu versus Sagat vibe from the original Street Fighter animated movie. But if it was done by a sort of... Disney Don Bluth vibe um, kind of thing with with that kind of flavor, but with all the violence, you know, because they're animated characters, you know, and the darkness of, say, Secret of Nim. So I, I started uh, thinking about one thing I've always wanted to ask you is if you also paint actual paintings from time to time. No, no, I don't. I don't. I'm a pure draftsman. I'm a pure draftsman. I've always tried to pick up paints and, and do it, and it's always been absolute shit. You know, sometimes I do a bit of digital painting, and um, I've got a bit better through trial and error over the years, and some of the paintings you see of the backgrounds in my own animations that I post up um, are all my paintings. Uh, but what some of them look pretty good. Uh, as animation background art, but it, but it would probably take a pro painter would probably whack it. Hi, could you learn to draw and animate? Oh, miss that. That's how I describe every great. It's not fun when you do it, but when you zoom out and take a look at it, <laughs> AMB is too. Real. There you go. Yes, you should really go with that. You're right. I don't really respect that. Yeah. So basically, the painting, I can. I'm, I've become a much better painter, and I might just try painting for fun. But when I get when I get the rabbit project, any suggestion on how to aware people about animation in India? I think animation in India, you know, the movie that I'm working on, but you might notice I'm not online at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm online a bit more at the moment as I've taken a bit of a break from it because the movie I'm working on has got a lot of Indian investment money in there. And there's a lot of uh, when you're working on movies like this, there's a lot of Indian, not just India, it happens in loads of places. There's a lot of uh, infighting and a lot of, uh, I don't, can't talk too much about it, but a lot of problems with it, with the investments and things like that sometimes. So things get put on hold for a couple of weeks uh, or a month and then you re 
regum back on or whatever. So that's what's going on at the moment. That's why you're seeing more of me at the moment. So, but uh, I might now, I might, I might just, well, I might, I'm enjoying real animator training so much that I might just go and re renegotiate my contract when, once I'm, once I'm back starting again, because I kind of like lost the interest as I've come back onto this stuff. So I don't know, but, uh, but the reason I'm mentioning that is because it's all Indian money. So I think Indians are very aware of animation, whoever asked that question. Um, so I, my, my background, I've got, a, I've got a lot of Indian in me. My parents were born in India. But uh, my, uh, so I, I think it's kind of sad that hand-drawn animation, I think the mentality in India is, is they always feel that if they've got a computer or if they've got some kind of but something technical that somehow it's got more substance to it than just raw creative stuff. So I don't know. It's it's a different culture. I've noticed that as things have become more computerized in India, the animation industry is huge there, particularly the VFX industry. Like It's kind of like what it is in New Zealand here. We've got a big VFX industry with Weta, but there's so many... Um, God, what is it, Prime Focus and all these other huge companies in India that are doing all the Hollywood effects now. So India is pretty big when it comes to animation. So, But um, as I said, I'm just, I'm just working on it. I mean, when I directed the animation for Lego Legends of Chima Series 1, it was all done in India, the animation. So all the animators, I never went to India. I communicated with them on Skype. I would look at their work, for example. They would have a character doing this, and I would say, look, no, don't do that. Why don't you pick this hand up and then delay this hand by four foot? So this is how I would instruct them. Okay, you're watching me being an animation director to an animator in Chima. I'd say, okay, instead of doing this with your character while he's talking, why don't you have this hand, this hand come up four to six frames later and then drop them together. So you have something like this. Then as you do that, bring the head down like this, and then as they come down, bring the head up, okay? So we'll do something like that. Now you put a little bounce on the end, and as you do that, okay, put a little shake on the head. So you have something like this, 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 okay? This, 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 and then have your character talk. And then you'll get a nice little kind of action like this. OK, so that's kind of how I used to uh, direct the animators on Skype in India, because, you know, I would some I would draw a lot of their thumbnails. But then sometimes I didn't have time to do all the drawing and all that. So I'd go and I'd just make little videos and all things like that. And uh, they would just follow that. So there's a lot of animation going. Uh, part of my final year's presentation at college I did three times one a sort of charcoal drawing of a rabbit skeleton, almost fun. Amazing, yeah. Sometimes it's really, you know, as I do that kind of artwork, right, um, sometimes doing this kind of stuff, doing this kind of stuff, I just find it really fun. So, when, you know, when you say you've got like artist block or something like that, you can never really have it because I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm, I'm basically doing my animated projects. And when I, when I don't feel like doing them, I've got this sketch pad to go to where I can revise my own anatomy uh and or learn how i can break it down to teach you guys better you know so i've got that i've got my hair design and then if i feel like just scribbling out some cartoons i've got this sketchbook to go and scribble out some cartoons and all that kind of stuff it's just for me the artist block is just a no i i, I d never understood it there are many artists here in India, but we're all doing Hollywood's work and Indian audiences just don't appreciate. Yes, unfortunately, that's the truth. That's the truth. I can't, I don't know how to change a society. Now I have Watership Down on the brain. Yeah, Watership Down. Uh, I love the original, even though it had a sloppy animation, the original old uh, one with John Hurt's voice, but every other attempt to do Watership Down after that. Um, there's a toilet in this hotel room just over there, and I think I'll go and think about Watership Down when I come off the Skype. <laughs> the live stream. Okay, right, so, um, what was I saying? So, uh, I can't remember what I was saying. We went off on so many other tangents there. But anyway, I just thought I'd make this video out to uh, talk about the importance of the sketchbook. I have... That too, I work 9 to 5 as a character and game artist, I have my own doodles everywhere in sketchbooks and live various places. You know, I recently watched DuckTales, it's still brilliant. 
Well, yeah, the, the DuckTales you're talking about might be the DuckTales who might... I'm thinking of getting him in. I'm thinking of doing an interview with him uh, to, to introduce you to you guys. You see, the original du uh, Disney DuckTales, Tailspin, and um, uh, those, those cartoons from the 1980s and 1990s, my director on this movie is a personal friend of mine, and um, he's the whole reason I'm working on... I, I agreed to work on this movie, to be honest with you. And he basically was the head of layout at Disney UK. And he was doing, he, 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 he did all the layout direction for DuckTales the movie. And, you know, DuckTales the movie, um, I've got a soft spot for it. The animation's a bit naff, you know, it's, it's all right. It's TV stuff. But uh, I do like those old Disney cartoons. They were high, high grade Disney TV cartoons, but they were still TV and they were still animated. A lot of them were animated in the Far East and they were animated but the layouts were done in london of all places so my mate who's the director of this movie who basically twisted my arm to come and help him on on it um i've worked with him a number of times and i was thinking today because i've taken a break from the movie because of the politics going on with the investors and all that i was thinking i was thinking of when i when i reconvene with him i was thinking of seeing if he would be up for doing a little interview and talking to 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 you guys all about uh, uh, his experience working as a as a layout director for Disney on 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 uh, on TV series and stuff like that, and uh, and the other guy who's involved, he's a major VFX artist at the moment. He worked on dare I say the, all the latest Disney remakes, um, uh, for example, all the motion camera tracking and all that for the CG. But he was, I think, animation director for the TV series 101 Dalmatians. He also worked at Disney London way back. They're considerably older than I am. And I was thinking, you know what, I'm working with these guys. And I never thought about it before. I never thought about bringing in some of my, my mates to come and, come, and give a, come and share their experiences with you as well. So you can, you, they can talk a little bit about, you know, working on some of those projects uh, so, so you get to understand and all that. If, if they agree, it'll be good. Maybe I'll even get my mentor um, involved. Uh, I don't know if, he, if he'll be up for it. He's a busy man. Um, but uh, that would be good if, he, if he'd agreed to talk about his time working on Hercules as a lead animator and working with Brad Bird on The Iron Giant as a sequence director. And, you know... So I've been thinking about possibly getting these guys to come in and do maybe like podcast style interviews um, to to enlighten you all, you know, um, and share you like some of some of my peer group, you know, the people who I'm used to working with, because obviously people often ask me, do I know this and do I know that? And I don't really watch artists on social media. I watch one one every now and again but i don't watch him a lot either which is is the mighty blaze you know um kyle why am i here it's 4 a.m you're here because of the magic of real animator training and amb <laughs> no but thank you i really appreciate you being online so that's it really i mean i i was talking about something and i kind of forgot i think it was about yeah it was about the painting it was about, before I go, let me finish up about that. Now I remember. Somebody asked me about painting. So even if my painting has got better on whatever, the, 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 prob, the thing is, is you shouldn't, there, there are many pieces of information out there that go focus on your weaknesses, you know, do your weaknesses, you know. But I don't believe in that. Um, I, I've, over, over the course of my life, I've read a lot of, um, <laughs> over the course of my life, I've read a, a, a lot of success books and personal development books. Um, and uh, a lot of them say the same thing. How are you doing? They talk about um, actually double down on your strengths, not your, and you know, you, it work on your weaknesses if you can, but double down on your strengths. So I might do painting just because I enjoy it. I might try painting just because I enjoy it, but I never focused on it. I always wanted to be an animator and I always drew in line and I always worked on my drawing, never my painting. You know, I had know a little bit about color theory and these things and contrast being interesting and light and shadow more from a drawing perspective than a painting perspective. But even if my painting, like for example, 
some of my digital painting of background art equals some of the <laughs> drip gods. You're going to quote me some more Rocky. We'll do, we'll do some Rocky back and forths in the chat. Uh, in the burn-in heart, just about to burst. Uh, I remember that. I remember that. But uh, so even though some of my, my digital painting background art, I would say is now on a par to some uh, of the background art from 90s Disney movies. Not the best background art, but some of, the, some of the background art. I still wouldn't call myself a painter. I still wouldn't do it. Uh, I do it at the moment on my own little desk pieces because it's just me. But once, for example, we get the rabbit thing going ahead and, and we get a budget and we get some capital, then I, I'll step aside and I'll put it in the hands of somebody far more capable than me, far stronger than me, because I want the better results. So I don't want to be, uh, I've got my idea about the, the, uh, the, how it should look and the art direction. But for example, my mate, my friend who's, who, was an art, who was an art director, uh, for the guy I was talking to you about, the DuckTales layout guy. And um, he's also gone to Ireland and done stuff for Cartoon Saloon and Secret of Kells and stuff like that. Now, I might not personally be that in, into the whole Secret of Kells look. Um, Iron Giant was awesome. I like the cop character. Uh, yeah, the, my mentor basically uh, boarded and supervised that whole interrogation scene. That was his sequence that he was in charge of, the whole interrogation scene between Hogarth and the cop. Could you have a localized payment option as I'm interested in the course, but Africa versus dollar is confusing. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really sorry about that, but as I'm, as, as I'm growing, I might start factoring stuff like that in. So uh, like, even like with the Americans, like I'm a UK based, even though I'm here in New Zealand, I'm based in two countries, but I'm primarily UK. So I do everything in, in Great British Pounds and um, it just makes it easier for me. It makes it more, more manageable for me. Sometimes it's a stronger decision to walk away from things you don't like, especially if you're a person that's very ambitious. Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe as you know, the library is growing and it's getting much better and better and stronger and stronger, which is why I'm able to even contemplate turning down multi-million dollar movie projects, which are being put in front of me. Um, but it's still not there yet for me to start thinking about um, other territories. Like I know I have a lot of people from from India, actually, and from Egypt and from uh, from Africa. I'm getting a lot of African interest. So I think as I start to grow, I might look into talking to some African investors and seeing what we can work out. But at the moment, um, at the moment, it's kind of I've got to I've got to focus on what I'm doing. I can't take my eye off the ball. So in a way, I kind of like uh, I like the doing all this in front of all you guys, so you can all see how A and B has kind of unfolded and happened, um, uh, and I can maybe inspire you also to get off your asses and to do something with your art as well, and to realize that we live in amazing times. You can start something online yourself, you know. Um, I have to say that I've got a lot of respect for uh, a lot of people. Have I, I don't often. Mulan animation versus Mulan 2 animation is like night and day. Of course, because Mulan animation is done by some, some of the best animators in the world, okay? Which were the hand-drawn traditional animators that were, you know, uh, basically the best in the world. Some of them went off to DreamWorks, some of them stayed at Disney. But, you know, there was very few people that could do what they could do. And Mulan 2 was done by... Um, animators who were, were competent, good and strong animators, but were in um, other countries, farmed out. That's how it works. He really gives hope to us all, AMB. Glad to the animation brought, brought me here. I'll stick to what I love. Absolutely. So you should. There, there, there are plenty of, there's plenty of um, people who are able to do stuff with their art online. You know, these are amazing times and you shouldn't you shouldn't worry about how good you are. You shouldn't worry about how good you are, because there's there's a variety of people out there who have got all kinds of levels of success and it's never round to Dracula. Well, I guess you're calling me Dracula. I'll take that as a compliment because I heard that vampires are supposed to be devilishly good looking. So 
Thank you. But uh, so the thing is, um, if you, uh, yeah, so it's got nothing to do with, uh, with the um, ability of, of the artist. It's to do with a, a, a whole range of things. And even if you look back to people like Vincent van Gogh, Pablo Picasso, um, so it's not even the commercial artists of our time. If you look back to those guys, some of them might have died in poverty, that's true. But people, people, <laughs> yeah, people often um, realize the art later. So my cousin is asking, why am I looking at Elvis? That look is going <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm being Johnny Bravo now. Well, as I said, some of you coming late, my wife's got a dinner at her work and we've come all the way to a hotel and I brought my sketchbooks to keep me busy. The light is getting even more. I'm going to bring in the, I'm going to bring in the orb here. So the light is getting even more poor, but I brought my sketchbooks along with me. I'm going to go and take her out for some evening uh, dinner or something. So that part I'm, I can go with. So that's why I'm looking like this. But um, I've been sitting, working in the hotel, doing drawing and all that stuff. Johansson, I've, I've already showed the sketchbooks. I've already talked about that. Um, there are three videos on the go, basically, very quickly, for those of you turning up late. This is a muscle one, so I'm developing, I'm, I'm working out how to teach you guys uh, muscles. This is gold because I want to animate, but there is not information on how to. Yeah, so basically, even, like, even without my Real Animator Training Library video, this could maybe inspire you to go out. So, you see, I haven't even got through the anterior triangle of the neck and how many pages is this okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so this is ten pages and i've just started i've just finished the what i would call the submental and submandibular triangle of the uh, of the neck which consists of the mylohyoid the stylohyoid the digastric muscle and there's also another one called the hyoglossus but i won't be teaching you that one because it's unnecessary see i need to figure out what what is necessary for you see all of these muscles are covered by something called the platysma which i haven't even got onto in this yet but i need to figure out what is necessary to teach you and what isn't so that's why i'm building the sketchbook but so you could do it on your own without without even joining the i haven't started the training videos of, on the muscles yet but i'm preparing to train you on the muscles so then on the next pages i'm going to focus on this here which is the muscular triangle of the neck which has the sternohyoid the omohyoid the thyrohyoid you see and have i missed one no i haven't because that's in the the carotid triangle so next 10 pages i'll focus on those triangles so i might have 30 pages of the neck okay and then i might go and then spend another two three, four pages working out a simple construction that I'll be able to do as a turnaround for you to follow along in the training library videos, okay? So that's what that sketchbook's all about. This sketchbook is just my development as I'm redesigning and perfect, I'm making my rabbit, updating my rabbit character, so I'm studying some real hairs. Obviously, he's not gonna look like so much like a real hair. He's gonna have more of a man-like proportion, but uh, obviously I wanna get as much of a hair in there as possible. To, to, to create the, an appealing design. So um, we do live in it. My lecture often says animate life, not movement. Yes, but in order to animate life, you see, that's a good saying. But has your lecturer taught you the 12 laws? Has he taught you there are six laws of movement and uh, six laws of life? You see, in order to convey life, you need to understand the laws. You see, the laws of movement, I would say, is timing arcing, uh, slowing in and slowing out, okay? I would say pose to pose and straight ahead. I would also say um, timing, arcing, slowing in, slowing out, pose to pose, uh, straight ahead. I would say solid drawing. You need to keep things solid, okay? And then you have, what else do you have? Then I would start talking about the laws of life. I'll find out what I want to do. I'll, maybe I'd put squash and stretch in there, but that's not necessarily, you know, you've got... 
You've then got anticipation, which I would call a law of life because we anticipate things. You've got primary and secondary action, which is based on anticipation. So that's a law of life. You've got, um, yeah, law of movement, follow through, overlap and drag. So that's your six laws of, of movement because things follow, they overlap, they drag. Then you've got your primary and secondary. Uh, you've got your anticipation. You've got your staging. You've got your exaggeration. You've got your appeal. And you've got your squash and stretch, which are your, your six laws of life because those kind of things put the laws in. So you need to really know those 12 laws off by heart. If you can bang out the 12 laws off by heart and then understand which laws are the laws of movement and which laws are the laws of life, not everybody teaches it. This is the way I teach it because I, people talk about the 12 principles, but you need, I like to teach them in a certain order. Are there any animations you still struggle to do? Um, I guess... If I was going to struggle to do animation, it would be to struggle to really convey a genuine performance. If, if, if I just want to move something, you know, Bruce Lee once said about martial arts, and I believe it's true about animation, because once you learn the movements, okay, once you learn movements, you're kind of able to do anything. But then how to do that thing honestly. So I remember in an interview, he was saying, I could show you some really flashy move, you know, really, you know, amazing, flashy, cocky move. But to express myself without lying to myself, my friend, that, my friend, is a very difficult thing to do, honestly. That's what he said about to, to, to martial arts. So rather than you look at a Bruce Lee fight, he's not doing somersaults and flips and all those kind of things in fact he couldn't do that when they wanted a flip they'd ask another actor to do it that wasn't martial arts he was more interested in direct quick fight movement finish whatever and that's why he was so unique in his expression so animation is acting animation is expression so once you get your kind of driver's license and you're able to make anything move it's being able to make that thing move with conviction and real believability. You know, I'm, 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 I believe I'm a great animator. I believe I've got a lot of ability, but I know that I don't have the ability of someone like a Glenn Keane who can drive a person to de tears with, by making the beast die or who can create a design like Tarzan who moves so much like an ape. A character who has been brought up by apes and doesn't know how to move like a man. Fucking hell. I, I mean, that is just genius. That is absolute genius. If I was given that task, I, I need to think more of myself and believe in myself. But I, where I'm at right now, I would just think I would come up with something and think it was good. And then Glenn would walk in and say, this is my idea. And I'd be like... Oh, okay. <laughs> because that is so damn good. You know, that is just so amazing. That is that is a whole new level. You know, that is that is a real that is a real real animator. You know, that is I mean even the guys who made the Spider-Man movies, the what is the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, they were studying Glenn Keane Starzan surfing around through the trees saying we want Spider-Man to move through the city like that. I mean, how cool is that? How cool is that? That's why I'm in awe of those guys. I'm in absolute awe of those guys. So it, it might sound arrogant to you if I said to you, I don't struggle when I animate. I don't struggle. I can animate anything. Give it to me. I'll do it. Whatever. I'll do it and I'll do it good. I'll do it, I believe, better than a lot of people, better than most. But there are certain people out there, in my opinion, who just destroy me. Because they have true, genuine expression. True, genuine expression. And they have attained that level. You know? Um, I'm streaming in New Zealand, Auckland time. Uh, I'm amazed that I've got 39 people online. Quarter past eight. I'm, I've got a dinner at nine. How do you feel about Milk Carl? Milk Carl, another one. You see, I'm talking about Glenn Keane because one of the things I've realized is... is when I give examples, a lot of you guys are so much younger than me. You really are. You know, I'm, I'm pushing 42. 
So a lot of you guys just don't know the stuff that I talk about sometimes. And I think that's why maybe some of my stuff doesn't really get... I sometimes get frustrated. I sometimes think, why, why bother with YouTube? They don't appreciate my uploads. And then I think... Well, people like current stuff, you know, and most people online are kind of young. So I got to get on understand that people will like the new current things, you know. Now, it's not my fault that current stuff is crap. You know, it is. There's no I mean Glenn Keane is not current, but he's the most current guy I can think of that did good animation. You know, John Pomeroy, Glenn Keane, James Baxter, all of those guys you know, uh, Andres Deja, Mark Hen. Um, my pleasure, my pleasure. I'll tell you what, to those of you who, can't, who talk to me from, Af from Africa, to those of you who talk to me from Africa, right, I'm going to get a chance to say this to you. I love you guys. Thank you so much, you know, because I've, I've been getting a lot of messages from people from Africa who have been telling me that they're really, really thankful for the stuff I upload on YouTube. And it's really hard to learn hand-drawn animation there. Um, so, so it's really hard to learn animation there for them. Sorry, just reading some of the comments. And it, it just makes me realize that I've got to keep uploading more content on YouTube that's free and that's full of uh, information, um, for, if anything, for those guys. Because some of those guys, simply because of the exchange rate or whatever, I don't know, they, they struggle to get into the library. And I know that my library is mainly for Western countries at the moment because obviously I'm still at a building stage. I need to support myself too. So it's got to be at a, at a, at a price which is, which is um, very valuable to people in the West. Uh, and and that I'm able to support myself with too. Uh, I wanted to do 2D, but in my country only offers 3D, but I'm learning my pleasure. So thank you. I'm going to keep putting stuff out there for you guys. Don't worry. All, all of you people, for example, Middle East, Africa, um, Asia. Uh, I get a lot of people from the Philippines wanting to learn from me too. Um, I just got into the pre preliminaries archive. It's amazing. I'm so enjoying it not even uh, thank you yeah for those of you who want to know what he's talking about the preliminaries archive is a free archive so if you're from africa or the middle east or the philippines or any of those countries who are, who are struggling to afford the real animator training library go to facebook uh, i got a few people from mexico yeah i got a pro from mexico who um who, who contacted me and that was really uh really nice to know actually um so go to Facebook, and I've got nine free... Um, yeah, I remember yellow uh, Cerebus, you're Sean. I know who you are. Um, go to Facebook. There's nine free training library videos for you to, to, to learn from. And I, I tell you what, they're really value-packed. It was really heart, heartwarming the other day. We had a woman who joined the Facebook group who, who's not a library member, but she's really, really studying those uh, free videos taking notes from them, and her five-year-old daughter had to go at the bouncing ball on the swinging pendulum, and it's amazing that even a five-year-old is understanding timing and arcing, and I, th and I don't take that lightly, because I think, you know, that's why I started this whole thing, to, to retrain the future generations to know the true skills of hand-drawn animation, and if a five-year-old is able to produce uh, content that, that has more timing to it than some college graduates out there, just from my little video like that, I'm thinking to myself, I, that's, that, that, that actually really excites me. That really excites me because it makes me think that when that five-year-old gets to a certain age, they might get a buzz. They might start looking at animation in a different way. They might just be seeing stuff and seeing things that looking at that going animation law, you know, animation law. You know, timing, spacing, like spacing just supposed to pose straight ahead, okay? So when people say timing and spacing, what they mean is uh, slowing in and slowing out, sorry. Uh, post, uh, not post to post straight ahead. It's just basically the timing, how long it takes, okay? And how do you add weight to the, the how do you add speed to the timing? Question, are there any animators or you can see a certain cycle walk in the street and be able to animate it? Yeah, you know what? As I was on my way driving down to Auckland, I was uh, my wife and her workmates were all talking shop. They work in insurance, so to be honest with you, uh, doesn't excite me. Um, 
The problem is that everyone can learn just the game of mind. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So as I was as I was looking out the window, I was watching people walk, and I was saying, look, that guy, that guy lingers on the down. That guy lingers on the passing position. That guy's a, just a contact to contact. His step is so quick that all I'm seeing is contact. So once you understand those poses, that's why you know this to Richard Williams. You know, God rest his soul. This to him, because although I teach this stuff too, and I teach it very differently, library members know that I teach it very differently to what he teaches. I teach very differently, but I've got a, I've, I've got a profound respect. Um, we love it when you talk about Glenn Keane and Milk Carl. I love it too. I could go on for hours. I've got a profound respect for him because he spent a whole book just talking about those positions. So you don't need to study from my library or anybody or anything. You can just buy that book. It's not very expensive. And you can read that book and you can just start understanding those different poses of the walk. And then when you watch people walk and you really understand and you know a little bit about timing and slowing in and slowing out, you could say, OK, if I'm going to animate that walk, I'm going to slow into the down. If I'm going to animate that walk, I'm going to slow into the passing position. If I'm going to animate that walk, I'm literally just going to go from contact to contact. OK, and I might I might combine the down and the passing position together because it's so fast. OK, so when you start watching people walk, you start looking at that kind of thing and um, then you're able to maybe understand uh, a little bit better. So, yeah, I mean, no, no matter what level you're at, you should always try to see things. Always try. This stream was worth it. Thank you. You know, I'm always like, I kind of like got this new YouTube thing going. So maybe I'll keep the stream up. Maybe I don't. If I don't hit a thousand views, I've got 53,000 subscribers. So if I don't hit a thousand views, it goes bye bye. So you might notice that a lot of my videos I got got rid of them the other day because um, Ken Harris was a major influence on Williams too. At that he was. I'm watching this at work. Time well spent. Thank you, Andreas. Um, so I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the stream. Um, I absolutely love it. I thought, shall I go live? Um, I don't really have my Cintiq. I'm just going to be in front of the camera. The lighting's bad. We're going to probably have grainy video, but I've got my sketchbooks. I've kind of done what I've had to do for the day in them. And, you know, maybe I'll share it with my people online. So um, whoever is live at the moment, thank you for joining. I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, um, it's great. I didn't expect to have uh, people watching, so many people watching at this time. Um, had fun with your vampire mistress. It was interesting listening to you. Well, <laughs> well, I guess if you, I guess she's a vampire, then yeah. Uh, what can what can I say? Uh, okay, <laughs> I know Vietnam flashback has a lot of respect for me, so he probably meant well with that comment, <laughs> but I don't know how to take it. <laughs> yeah, this, this is one of the other reasons I hesitate to come online. I get, I get a lot of mixed responses about uh, my appearance. Some people think I look kind of cool. Some people think I look kind of creepy and dreadful, uh, which is why I tend to just le let my work do the talking. But you know what? I'm kind of comfortable in my own skin. So if, if people think whatever, then they think whatever, you know. Um, sometimes I think it's nice if I'm doing, if people are joining my library and all that kind of thing, it's nice to put a face to the voice. You should do more videos about these old pros. Glenn, Glenn really should be the 10th old man. Well, what I did is I did, I see people who say, I, what I did is I have started doing like, if you see the Lion King one, <laughs> thank you, Khalil. If you see the Lion King one, um <laughs> thank you if you see the lion king video on the scar i'm breaking down um andreas deja and i've done a lot of milk carl breakdowns and a lot of my breakdowns uh some of my breakdowns i did i've got in the library as bonus material in the ask amb streams and whatever so it's not really courses but it's bonus material so it's not you can't really charge for um for that because it's somebody else's work so I've just I would have just deleted that, but I've kind of kept that in a vault, the Ask AMB vault, and it's just bonus material for people who watch. But I'm I'm starting to do more breakdowns and just leaving them up for free because I think you know for as I said I've got to find ways to, that I can share and enlighten people who are perhaps non-library members, and uh, you know um, I believe it's always good to give. So I've I've started to leave stuff online. There was my video why was the Lion King. So I might do a breakdown um, 
uh, I might just ask you guys what would you like to see me break down uh, in regard to animation and character animation. But I will say, let me just see if I can plug in my uh, charger in case this thing dies on me. But I will say, um, <coughs> never charge your phone when you're, you know. But, I, what, but what I will say is that basically, um, if I... If you're going to request me to break stuff down, I don't mind breaking down some anime. There's a lot of strong anime out there, uh, strong scenes, and I have broken down some anime. Um, but when I break stuff down, there's going to be no fanboy stuff. It's got to be high-grade animation. It's got to be good animation that needs to be studied and learned from. Somebody asked me to break down some Flash animation one day. It was literally just... They said, A and B, can you do a breakdown of this? And I didn't want to be rude because I think the person, I, I had a, quite a few back and forths with the person and I, I kind of like them and I think there's a lot of mutual respect. Um, but I just didn't reply because I said, my God, I mean, how am I going to break that down? It's absolute shit. You know, I, I could do better, you know, when, I'm, when, you know when, I, when I've got diarrhea and I'm sitting on the toilet. You know, that's just, I can't even talk about that. That's just absolute garbage. Why would I break that down? Um, so when I break down an animation, it's got to be a strong piece of animation. I did break down a Roger Rabbit scene. Um, if you go to my channel, have you seen Nocturna? Yes, uh, Yellow Cerebus. I worked on El Cid the Legend, which was Film Max animation. I worked on, here we go again, you look like a Brazilian Dracula. Thank you, thank you. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, two. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. three, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now the count will teach you timing in animation. One keyframe. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There you go, everybody calling me Dracula. Okay, right. So, um, yeah, I worked on uh, El Cid the Legend, which was a Filmax animation film. And I know that they made, Dra um, not Dracula, they made Nocturna, which looked really nice looking film. It reminded me of a cross between... Uh, City of the Lost Children, and I can't remember what I was going to say, so I'll just say City of the Lost Children. And then there was also um, uh, this kind of anime-inspired film they were doing with this ninja guy. Um, so there you go. There you was. I love Roger Rabbit. You find him a tiny bit floaty at times. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Um I absolutely love Roger Rabbit. You have the tongue of a harsh teacher, the empathy of a monk, and the honesty of an expert. Man, I love that comment. I'm leaving the stream up, and I'm going to take a freeze frame of that. That's, whoever said that, thank you. That has got to be one of the best um, remarks anybody has ever said about me. I, you know, I, People have said many things about me, some good, some bad. And I've even found some of the bad things quite hilarious, to be honest with you. Me and my wife often read them and laugh about them. And, you know, we, we, we tell people about them and we have a good laugh about what people say about me. But, but I have to say that that was one of the best things <laughs> I've, I've ever heard. Thank you so much. Uh, but, um, yes, I find Roger Rabbit a little bit floaty at times. Um, there's good and bad animation in many things. I think Roger Rabbit, though, uh, stands up as one of the greatest pieces of cinema ever made. I think um, it, as far as the illusion, for example, the animation in uh, Mary Poppins is probably stronger than Roger Rabbit. Um, uh, the animation uh, of the penguins and all that done by people like Milk Carl and all that. But does that make the illusion better? If I'm honest, no. The overall illusion of who framed Roger Rabbit for me has never been bettered. I think, you know, Space Jam is very, you know, one of my heroes and the, uh, one of my mentors and somebody who I've worked with and learned a hell of a lot from Uli Meyer. I've got so much respect with him, for him. He designed the Schwack Hammer and all the villains and had, had influence in Lola Bunny. And, he, you know, he was instrumental in space, making Space Jam. But for me, Space Jam has a is is very very weak in regards to um, who, comparing the animation to Who Framed the Illusion, not just the animation, the illusion to to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Who Framed Roger Rabbit stands to me as the ultimate blend of cartoon animation with 
live action. Sometimes I, I, I look at it like Jessica Rabbit squeezing that fat man's cheeks and um, rubbing that thing on his head. Um, bellissimo. It is just outstanding. It's giving me shivers down my spine as I talk about it. And, you know, when Roger is about to sit on Eddie Valiant's chair and he goes, don't sit on that chair, that's my brother's chair. And Roger kind of does that. And you see the little handprint on the chair and the shadows and, oh my God, oh my God. I know I know a lot of people who worked on Roger, Roger Rabbit and because a lot of it was made in England and believe me, they're really, really shit. They can't animate, they can't animate. Uh, Roger Rabbit had a lot of people working on it, a lot, a lot of geniuses working on it. They probably had to contend with moving next to natural human character and while being extreme and slapstick. Yeah, well, it's all on being ones. And as I said, you know, uh, Roger Rabbit had a lot of geniuses working on it, a lot of the strongest Disney animators at the time. Um, but it, I'm looking at my watch, how rude. That's just because my, my wife's going to walk through the door and say it's time to go, and then I'm going to go and stick these fangs into some people because you're all calling me a vampire and idiots who claim that ana to be animators have never seen it oh well there you go yeah yeah you know what um many people people just have different vibes if somebody loves anime okay if every a lot, i've got to make this clear like because of the stuff i say on my streams a lot of people think that i'm out to bash everyone who likes anime and some people love it because they've, they've got their own personal vendetta against anime people look i love anime and i'm going to let you into a secret part of my dress sense is spot inspired by king of fighters what is it <coughs> okay i love anime okay i don't hate anime i've got to be very honest with you i love some of the design style i love some of the influences in there i love japanese things i love martial arts of course i'm gonna love anime what I talk about on my streams is when I talk about animation quality and learning animation, I'm trying to connect with the people who are serious. When you've got fanboys, you sometimes have people who think they want to do something and they're just not interested. They just don't have the patience and they just think they're experts and blah, blah, blah talk, 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 and think they can talk about, call everyone shit, call Disney shit, and everything, and just all they want to talk about is their anime, and a lot of them are just into the hentai stuff and all that. I've got no time for it. So I just dismiss them. I just dismiss them. And that's not the same thing as talking to an anime fan who, who is an animator, somebody who really loves animation somebody who wants to do anime animation and do it well. I've got a lot of time for them. I've got a lot of respect for them. And, I'll, and I'll, 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 it's my passion to help them. What is your opinion of one of the best studio animations and the best quality you know would like to watch something today and learn something? Kind of uh, missed that. I kind of... Um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you about what I think one of the best studio animations is in, in two different styles. Uh, but just getting onto this. When it comes to cinematography, like Ghost in the Shell and Akira a second to none, those movies are works of art. Miyazaki movies are amazing. Okay, I love Street Fighter, the animated movie. I love the design style of characters in Samurai Showdown and King of Fighters. Absolutely amazing stuff. These are some of the best draftsmen and, and really strong. I won't call them the best animators in the world. No, they don't have... I always say that... Uh, uh, a C-grade animator at Disney might not be able to draw as well as some of those guys, but he can animate better than, than the best of them because they just don't practice that stuff. They just don't know that stuff. It's different. It's a completely different world. It's very limited. They work when your peer groups are limited and you're the king, you're the best in a low peer group, then your work is going to stand out. But if he, if those guys was to travel to the U S and sit and work in a Disney at the times around James Baxter, around Mark Henn, around Andreas Deja, around Glenn Keane, around, and then I'm sorry, he's, he's gonna, it's, it's, it's just really low level. But his draftsmanship might stand up. He might even be a better draftsman than some of them, okay? But that's not animation. That's not animation. So when I talk about how you need to learn the anatomy and learn all these laws and then take it, take it whatever way you want, 
then absolutely that's exactly what they have to learn and that's and I'm here to help them and teach them those things I'm here to teach them all about that stuff and if they want to do anime so I'm not going to call them idiots if they haven't seen Roger Rabbit I'm not going to call them idiots if they haven't seen a Disney film or they don't know who Milk Carl is because they're passionate they're passionate about what they like. They're passionate about what they want to do. And they put in the work. They put in the work. You can see it through some of their efforts. Some of these guys who try to animate anime fight scenes online, some of them can really do it really well. And they put in the work. And you look at it and you know they understand timing. You know they understand arcs. You know they understand some of that stuff. And I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I've got a tremendous amount of respect for them. They're the people who have always can welcome and like have great conversations with myself. But the ones I talk about on the streams are the ones who come online yapping that they know it all and talking about how, uh, you know, Disney's for children and blah, 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 simple cartoon stuff and telling me that I, you know, this is an animation, this is boring, what I'm teaching about all this, you know, the no patience. They're just jack-offs who've got one hand down their pant while they're drawing their hentai vision. And, you know, they're going to grow up and then animation's just going to be another has-been pastime like playing a video game or going through, having a having a, a Game of Thrones session all nighter where you watch back-to-back -back episodes. I've got no time for them. They're not what I'd call real animators. They're not interested in wanting to make it real. Basically, a real animator isn't about how good you are or whether your animation is good or bad. It's about how, whether you want to make it real and whether you're willing to do what it takes to make it real. Are you going to train for real and make it real? There's better 2D animation on YouTube videos than there are in many mainstream movies. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You see, I see a lot of talent on YouTube, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. You see, I see a lot of raw talent out there, but they don't understand the laws. They don't understand solid drawing. They don't understand how to get solid drawing. They think by having light box, by doing place and trace, by doing all these things, they don't understand um, the complexity of arcs. They don't understand true squash and stretch. They literally, um, you know, they're, they're like talented deviant artists who've had a go at animation. And it looks kind of nice, but... Any, any animation pro that looks at it, you will basically understand that the person isn't very well trained. But that doesn't mean it's bad work. That doesn't mean it's... what. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. They're the kind of people who I love. They're the kind of people who I have the hope for. They're the kind of people who I feel are going to turn animation around because they want to do it. They've got the time. They've got the effort. They've put in the effort to draw and color all this stuff and make it looks make it look to the best of their ability that they possibly can. They just don't know how. That's all. And sometimes other people will watch it and be amazed. And I'm so happy for them. Fantastic. But inside they know that they need to know a little bit more. And there's, there's somebody out there called Life Fantasy who's like that. And she's come to train under Real Animator Training. And she's also bought some of Aaron Blaze's course. She's hungry for knowledge. She wants to improve. She wants to get better. So it's not just, you know, it's, 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 she, she wants to get that pro level. So there are people out there, and that's, they're the people I'm banking on who are going to carry traditional animation and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, wave the flag for it. They're going to acquire the skills, they're going to acquire the know-how, they're going to acquire the knowledge, and they're going to inject the quality back in there. But yes, when I look, like I was watching a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, pro-grade animation out there because you know it's done on the cheap it's done in stu other studios it's really really bad you know even back to when we're talking about uh, the tv stuff like you know batman the animated series ha was was a uh, good quality tv animation but when, when when you watch it you see it and you you know you think to yourself well there's the, the, that doesn't arc the you know the, the the timing's poor the you know the 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 held cell is clearly the body is on a hold and the arm is not moving in relation to the body. It's a weak drawing. So that's what happens. You know, just because it's pro-grade stuff and just because it's traditional doesn't necessarily mean it's so good. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why, um, why I'm doing real animator training. And, you know, uh, Richard Williams was in his 80s and he was so patient when working on animation and so honest he never rushed it and things aren't taught like that. Yeah, well, it's all rush, rush, rush. I can understand the rush, though. I rush things myself. 
Um, I don't rush everything, but I rush, for example, that um, a lot of the stuff that I put on, on out there and that's colored in is rushed. Um, I, for example, that Lost Boys thing I did, I love it. I, I'm very proud of it, but I just did, I just blocked out my thumbnails. I didn't revise my thumbnails and I just cleaned up my rough animation and put it out there and wanted to make a finished piece of content uh, that was full color. Um, uh, so it is pretty rushed. And, you know, when, even when you look at uh, stuff like Beauty and the Beast, um, it had to be done at speed. So a lot of it is rushed. It's a great movie. It's got great animation in there. But a lot of it is rushed. And you see that in a lot of some of those, uh, some of those what they call the Renaissance movies, that some of my favorites, like Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast and the Mermaid. Um, a lot of the animation in there is actually rushed. It doesn't mean it's bad. Like I talked about my Lost Boys animation, or I talked about the, I've got an animation of a rabbit going ah, bang like that. It looks good. It moves nice, whatever, but it's rushed. And that goes back to what I was talking to you about earlier, about expressing yourself honestly, about what, what you really struggle with. Struggle with is really trying to get, you know, that's why if you listen to Glenn talking about um, animation, uh, when he animates a scene, he, t he picks the ones that he's really going to spend time on and do, do a really good job because the ones that he can't because of the deadline. You've got to rush it. You got you got to rush a lot of stuff. Then DreamWorks opened, and DreamWorks wanted to kick Disney's ass. So you saw a lot of a lot of taking their time a little bit more, taking their time over. What's your opinion on animations like The Simpsons? Bullshit. Okay, bullshit. I don't like it. Um, so the thing about uh, there you go. I would make a I would make a a, a very honest politician. <laughs> so a lot of the things about. Um, uh, DreamWorks came, they really wanted to take time and, and kick Disney up the ass. So they started putting more budgets in and, and extending the deadlines and trying to make it more lavish. So then you started to get this this more, I wouldn't necessarily say, for me, some of the beauty animation in Beauty and the Beast is rushed, but that, that doesn't make it worse than The Prince of Egypt for me. For me, you know, when something has more life in it and more heart in it, it doesn't actually mean that it's, uh, people are need money to hire more people yeah so it doesn't actually mean that it's going to be better but what you noticed what you can notice with the arrival of dreamworks is that cleanup started animation started getting even more solid and more precise because they were spending more on cleanup and when you spend more on cleanup what happens is is you get more <laughs> <laughs> oh shed for prime minister make it happen oh god no no the last thing i would want to do is that um so what would happen is is when you refine an animation like that you refine the arcs as well you refine the solidity of the character you you don't just clean up the keys so when you look at the don bluth stuff the early don bluth films i love them i love them and i love their rawness because they had a, lo uh, a smaller budget and a smaller team and the talent, you know, the, 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 the animators, they had Len Simon, they had John Pomeroy, they had Gary Goldman, they had Don Bluth and they had some other strong animators who perhaps I don't know, but very few, um, Sandra Cluso, I believe, uh, amazing animator. You had a lot of people that were really good animators, but then they would go to the assistants and the cleanups and the cleanups would clean up the extremes and keys and then just in between. And there'd be a lot of, um, you know, dodgy in-betweens and a lot of things that perhaps stop the character from being quite as solid or quite as smooth as it could be. And personally, I kind of like that raw look. And when I was looking at that, those films, it made me realize, you know what, maybe I can produce more finished looking stuff online. Because I never want, I never colored my stuff. I never finished my stuff. I said, you know what, if, if Don's stuff looks great, and the early Disney stuff like Mermaid and Aladdin looks great. Then I'm just going to do it like that. I'm just going to I'm just going to uh, just not focus so much on keeping everything as solid as I could do. Although I got kind of caught up with the kicking rabbit and the you'll see with my Christmas thing. I can't help myself. So but with the Lost Boys thing, with the first rabbit doing uh, that I was fighting with and a couple of other colored things you've seen me do uh, for AMB. I was I was kind of careless like that because I thought, well, you know what? Those guys did it and it looked great. But then DreamWorks, you had the spirit. You had, um, I personally think Sinbad was a, a shitty film. I can't stand it. It's one of the worst animated films I've ever seen. 
but it had some amazing work by James Baxter in there. You had so you had all these really solid uh, characters, and then the Disney upped its game. Disney started doing solid cleanup and solid characters and solid more solid drawing because more money was spent on cleanup. And when more money spent on cleanup, you then you then have a cleanup supervisor. You have a key cleanup. Then you have a cleanup assistant. It almost becomes like an animation tier. Whereas back in the day, you had an assistant animator who would do rough in betweens, give it to the cleanup. The cleanup guy would do, there'd be a head of cleanup, and the cleanup would go on and do all the all the uh, stuff that uh, the, the instruct all the other things about keeping things to model. But then the cleanup team and the in between team would just work their hardest. But they didn't have the time and they didn't have the budget to really lavishly work the cleanup the way they did when when DreamWorks came on the scene. So then these things went more up and up in budget and the more and more time was spent, you know, and then you started getting these really lavish looking hand drawn films with really solid characters. I mean, Dr. Doppler, Sergio Pablos is Dr. Do Doppler in uh, Treasure Planet is one of them. So outstanding, um, you know, uh, stuff. Uh, personally, I don't think it makes it better animation because if you look at Milk Carl's Madame Medusa and Milk Carl's Sword in the Stone, somebody asked me, what do I think is the best animation out there? I think some of the best character animation that's unrivaled, I think, is in Sword in the Stone. I, the character animation in that film is outstanding. And it's got that scratchy line. It's got that scratchy, rough look to it. It's got that hand-drawn pencil look to it. So I don't necessarily think that just because something's really had a lot of time spent on the finishing and the refining and keeping it solid, that it's necessarily superior animation. Um, but uh, this is truly a great session. I'm really enjoying this stream. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, I'll be bringing it to an end slowly because the time is coming when um, I've got to go and do my vampire thing. Everybody calling me Dracula. I've got to go and I've got to go and uh, take my wife out to to dinner or whatever <laughs> and do whatever. But uh, I was planning to just be online for ten minutes and show you my sketchbooks. But I didn't I didn't realize that I would have as many people. Uh, for me on a live stream, this is this is quite a number of people. I I, I normally have uh, between forty and sixty is a lot on my live streams. So. Um, I expected to have about five to seven people at this time, but uh, there you go. So um, thank you to the 37 people who are watching at the moment. Thank you for your time and your view viewership. It's very much appreciated. And um, yeah, so that's it. So um, I don't think, I mean, we can have one more question. I honestly thought you were, for, were imitating John Travolta from, I didn't see, that. oh my God, don't say that. I'd rather be Dracula. You know, my wife often tells me she married me because she thought she saw Travolta in me. I've got nothing against Travolta, but I've never really liked his look. I don't know. <laughs> we are here for the artists. We really enjoy. Thank you very much. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so um, I wasn't expecting to still be up, but I'm here. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. So can we get a last uh, can we get a question? Uh, one more question. I'll take one more question and then I'll go. Okay, how's that? Any 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 more question that that, that obviously I can't show you how to draw right now. But um, eh, thank you for this honest and tough talking stream. I thought I was a bit more. I thought I was a bit more casual. Looks like I'm. Looks like I'm. Uh, I'm making. What makes you an expert in animation? Okay. I believe what makes you an expert is being able to say that uh, know the 12 laws um, being able to not just know the, what the 12 laws are or by heart but being able to understand uh, each and every one of those 12 laws exactly and how they relate to each other so for example somebody asked me will you make a visit to the US and do a class I'm thinking about it okay I'm thinking about it I'm thinking about actually coming and meeting some people I love America it was my dream to come and live in America and work in America at one point, but then hand-drawn animation stopped being done, and I, I was having a thriving career in the UK, working on US films anyway, and um, then I met my wife, who's a Kiwi, and I started moving more to New Zealand and back, but I tell you what, that doesn't stop me from visiting America. So, um, getting back to the question, okay, I've got to be fast, I, I can't help it, I, I, do, I do love to talk. Um, what makes life life? <laughs> okay, well, we'll talk about the illusion of life and stick to the question. Somebody said, um, look, on stream, I asked you, 
I'm not I'm not a library member. I don't know if I can afford it, but um, can you help me with this question? I'll help anyone. I don't care whether you can afford the library or not. Okay, if it's a good question, if you want to learn, I'll help you. If you want to jack off to anime, fuck off. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help but put that in there. But um, but the thing is, he said, look, you said, what's a, what can I do as a beginner to be good at animation? I said, there are 12 months in a year. There are 12 laws of animation. Why don't you learn, spend one month learning each law? Okay, do that. Then you'll be a good animator. So I just said that off the cuff from on stream. And he said to me something, I got a message on my Facebook. And he said to me, is there an order that you should learn these laws? I've been, uh, the laws you, you said you've taken from the 12 principles uh, and, and I've got the illusion of life. And he starts with squash and stretch. Now I messaged him back or I didn't message him back. I spoke to him on stream because he confronted me again because I didn't have time to message him back. And I said, look, the illusion of life was written by animators for animators. It is my Bible. It is the ultimate book on animation. But I'm telling you now, that you cannot start with squash and stretch. Okay, if you know nothing about animation, you cannot start with squash and stretch. These guys were animators trying to improve their animation. So they already knew and understood everything, but then they found by doing these 12 things, that, that these working on these 12 things, they would get better and a more outstanding animation. Squash and stretch, they found, wow, that really brings life to it. But here's the thing, how do you time squash and stretch? How do you anticipate squash and stretch? Well, how would you use it in anticipation? How would you arc it? When would you use it? If your character is going into a down pose, okay, is he going to squash? Of course. If he's going in an up pose, is he going to stretch? But what about the drag follow through? How is that going to squash and stretch? Okay, so there has to be a law. There has to be a way that you understand these things. Now, the law of laws, the first law of all is timing. Everything is done within a space of time. Okay, the second law of laws, which you can't negotiate, which goes hand in hand with timing, is slow in and slow out. Because that affects the speed. If I go like this and go like this, there's got to be a slow in and slow out somewhere. If I go like that, it's got to be a slow in and slow out there. But I'm going to throw in an anticipation. I'm going to anticipate. That's in martial arts, you call that telegraphing the move. Okay? So this thing is anticipation. But before anticipation, we've got to talk about arcs. Okay? So we've got slow in, slow out, timing, arcing, the three major laws of movement, which everything else is based on. Everything. Everything. Then you can start talking about pose to pose or straight ahead. How am I going to work out how to do this movement? Okay, so he's here. He anticipates back. We don't know about anticipation yet, but we're studying. So we, we just say he brings his hand back and then his next hand's there. Okay, so the arc is going to be like this. It's going to be a circular arc. Okay, it might look straight like this, but it's going to be a circular arc. So he's going to bring it back. He's going to throw that in there like that. So it's going to be something like that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to slow into this pose, we're going, to slow, we're, going to, we're going to then virtually connect here and we're going to recoil. And we're going to slow into the recoil because it's a circular arc like this. It looks straight, but it's a circular arc. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. It's a straight circular arc. So the, at the end of the day, you need to understand that pose to pose. I will do it pose to pose rather than straight ahead. If I did it straight ahead, I'd have a mushy looking thing which doesn't work, okay? I might say, I might work out a movement straight ahead later on. I'll say he puts his hand here, he does another one, he brings this around here. He, okay, that I might start working out and then making a flow straight ahead. So straight ahead, pose to pose, okay? Timing, arcing, uh, slow in, slow out, straight ahead, pose to pose, okay? Then you've got, so that's four. Then you've got, um, God, what is it? Pose to pose, straight ahead, Arcing, uh, timing, slow in, slow out, follow through and overlap. Okay, follow through and overlap. Okay, so this is here, but look at my sleeve. This is here, look at my sleeve. It's following through and it's overlapping. So these are basic movements. You don't have to do it with, if this book was moving, it's not alive. But look at the drag on there. Okay, I'm going here. I'm just doing this. I'm just doing this. But there's a drag on here like this. It's a drag. Okay, there's a drag. So there you go. So you need to understand the laws of movement. You need to understand how things move first. And then you can think about the laws of life. Okay, so if I'm going to do something like this, I'm going to put it, I might throw in, some of you guys like talking about uh, smear frames. I don't like smear frames or, uh, or um, multiples, but I might because it's such a fast movement like that. Okay, I might throw in a smear frame, which could be a stretch a stretch and then have the fist squash and bring it back if it connects the person okay 
If it connects the person, have a little bit of a squash. You, mo you wouldn't necessarily draw the connection, but you might have a little bit of a squash on the face and then have a stretch of it moving back as it connects. So squash and stretch comes in to give it more life. Okay, primary and secondary action. Before I throw the punch, the punch is the primary action. The secondary action could be the Bruce Lee kind of like this with the head. That's the secondary action, like that, okay? Secondary action, the head. But the head is arcing like this, the hand is arcing like this, okay? Immediately, that creates something. So that, again, so when you think about those kind of laws, see, now you're seeing, as I'm explaining to you, I'm kind of putting on my animation director head. This is how also when I direct people, I tell them to, to look out for these arcs. See, immediately my head's doing that, and it's going in an opposing action of my hand. Just for a simple punch. Just for a simple punch. To make a simple punch look better. You see, I could have done just done, just done that. I could have just done that and bobbed the head up and down like, like that to make it look alive like a piece of cut out shit. Cut out shit. Okay? No. It's not good enough. You, if you understand these laws and these arcs, and then you can, you can then put an extra arc on the eyebrow after the punch. And then you can really bring in the character to bring more life. This is also appeal, exaggeration. So after the punch, I could open the eyes and bring it in. And then lead in with another punch. But the expression leads. Okay, so it's like... Whoosh, whoosh, this kind of thing. So all of this stuff is damn important to becoming a better animator. And it's all based on these laws. All based on these laws. Your six laws of movement and your six laws of life. That's the what that. So if you say, how do you become a good animator? I simply say to you, animation law. Know the 12 laws, but more importantly, understand them. Don't just say, arcing, timing, pose to pose, follow through, squash and stretch, primary, secondary, anticipation, exaggeration. It's just empty memorizing. Reading and memorizing these things is not enough. You've got to understand them. You've got to act on them. You've got to. It's like me. You could you could sit here, you could sit here and fill a whole sketch bag, memorizing all this stuff. You might remember it, but it'll be useless if you're not actually taking note. If you're not actually really taking note of what is it. If you're just drawing this and saying, "Yeah, I'm working anatomy. I filled a whole sketch bag, so I know, I know, I know anatomy." Nah, nah. Sorry, you gotta. Mind and body, you've got to absorb the information. Just drawing it for the senseless act of drawing it. Yeah, I got it done. It's like a child doing homework because he has to do homework and then he wants to get that coursework to pass the test. The schools don't give a shit what he does with his life afterwards. They don't care. They just want the grade. You know, he wants the grade. A couple of years down the line, he doesn't remember any of it. Waste of time. Okay, you've got to really, really absorb the information, understand it, make sure it sinks in so that when you do your work, it's work that's great. Okay, and that, just as I've said, do your work, I'm going to end the stream now because I've got to go to dinner and I'm going to end it with my favorite quote. I hope I remember it. I was talking about memorizing. I'm going to read uh, that. <laughs> anyway, so I hope I remember it. Okay, do your work. Not just your work, but a little more for the lavishing's sake. That little more which is worth all the rest. That little more that I was talking about, which is worth all the rest. And if you doubt as you must, and if you struggle as you must, do your work. Put your heart into it, and the skies will clear. Then through your very doubt and your very suffering will be born the supreme joy of life. Because it's that suffering and doubt that actually makes it all the more worthwhile, my friends. So whatever it is you're doing right now, if you really believe in it and you want to, you want to make it real, you've got to train for real. You really do. You've got to put your heart into it for real. If there's one thing I'm going to say to you, never mind about the library, this is, this is just real talk regardless. That's called the Real Animator Training Library. Never mind. Just get real with yourself. Whatever you do, do it for real. Do it for real. And it'll become real. I tell you that. Just make it real. It's got to be real in hair. That is the right side. <laughs> it's got to be real in hair, right? 
Okay? And on that note, I'm going to go. See you later, people. You're going to see my finger come on here. And how do I end the live stream? How do I end the live stream? What do I do? i got to press this thing here. And I don't even know how to end. Is it this X here? There. Are you sure you want to stop streaming? Yes, I do. Okay, bye-bye, people. Thanks a lot. You've been an awesome audience.